Hi folks, I'm glad you're here. Thank you very much for joining me today and welcome to all the new subscribers. If you're new, uh, you probably don't know, but I do try to go into details of earthquakes that most newspapers and mainstream media doesn't cover. There was a light earthquake early this morning there about six miles um, west of Bishop, California. It struck at about 6.45 a.m. local time. It had a shallow depth of only um, 9 kilometers or 5.6 miles. And it was reportedly felt by at least 54 people um, in this location. Some of the people that reported the earthquake said it was short but strong. And there was horizontal sideways shaking. Drawn out in yellow is the Owens Valley Fault Zone. And I'll bring it out because it's fairly extensive. It goes all the way down here. Um, probably past, let's see, Owens Valley, um, Owens Lake. In 1872, there was a magnitude 7.9 where this entire fault zone ruptured. There will be links down below for everything that I'm showing you. Here's the faults in that location. Uh, the closest one, here you can see Rocking K. Um, this is West Bishop. Um, they just call this the Owens Valley Fault Zone. All these, they don't have individual names for all these different faults. Uh, to the east is the White Mountain Fault Zone. The Owens Valley Fault Zone is part of the Walker Lane Fault Zone. I've talked about this in the past, where the uh, Walker Lane Fault Zone um, accommodates about 25% of all the stress from the movement of the tectonic plates. Eventually, one day, this will be the major fault zone. Um, no longer will you have the San Andreas Fault Zone. This will become um, the main fault zone. Currently, the San Andreas Fault Zone accumulates about 75% of the pressure as the uh, tectonic plates move, where the Walker Lane Fault Zone accumulates about 25% of that stress. Now, the White Mountains Fault Zone is about 500 to 1,000 uh, meters wide and consists of up to four strands that cut through um, the western range of the White Mountains. Let me bring this out. So it's divided up into four sections. The White Mountain Fault Zone uh, also accumulates um, the stress that's being built up along the um, Walker Lane Fault Zone. I keep emphasizing how because of the weakening of the Earth's magnetic field, yeah, our tectonic plates are moving more and more and more. To give you an idea of the potential of what could happen, on July 21st, 1986, a magnitude 6.5 earthquake struck near the town of Bishop. Um, two people were injured. The quake fractured the ground in some places, causing rock slides and landslides, and caused significant property damage. And that earthquake was up over here. Okay, so here we got the uh, 3.1 and this is the earthquake that occurred in 1986. The 1882 what they call the Owens earthquake down over here right there. Um, different reports about how strong it was. It could have been as strong as a magnitude 7.9. That's what they figure with new research that has been ongoing. Back then most of the buildings that were built of adobe some brick were destroyed and about 27 people died in Lone Pine. That's nearly 10% of the population and 56 people were injured. Just imagine nowadays if they had a large earthquake, 10% of the population being killed. Yeah, that's not good. Uh, we do have stronger earthquake standards, but the population is still a lot more than what it was in um, 1872. It had a maximum intensity of 10 
meaning very extreme. Of course, yeah, lots of damage and people killed and injured. It was one of the largest earthquakes to hit California in recorded history and was similar in size to the 1906 San Francisco earthquake. The earthquake uh, was the result from sudden vertical movement of 15 to 20 feet and a right lateral movement of 35 to 40 feet. Can you imagine that suddenly being um, moved anywhere between 35 and 40 feet? Wham! Now Bishop, California is located let me go up over here. Um, like other many other places there in California, near the boundary of two tectonic plates, the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate. The movement of these plate is what primarily causes the earthquakes. Let me bring this over. This here is the Rocking K. And we have the town of Bishop. As these plates grind past each other, they can get stuck. And when the stress reaches a point, builds up, and it suddenly suddenly releases in the form of earthquake. I don't know what the population is right now for the town of Bishop, but as of 2020, which was four years ago, it was uh, a little over 3,000 people. USGS gave it an intensity level of four, meaning it was felt indoors by many, outdoors by a few. Um, some of the people would have been woken up. Dishes, windows, and doors were rattling. Automobiles would have rocked noticeably. Here on the Moment Tensor Ball, you can see how the fault moved going uh, north. Um, the initial first wave of the earthquake came from the south. Here's the felt map of some of the reports that were sent into USGS. Um, Bishop, we got intensity level 4, 2 there. Um, nine responses there from right where the earthquake supposedly happened. Intensity level 2. 36 responses. Intensity level 3. And another one of 2. Then further north, 2 responses. These are all bishop, they say. Intensity level 2. Always check your water and gas lines. Check them for leaks after a major earthquake. Have some sort of tool where you can shut it off if you detect, um, yeah, especially gas leaks and water leaks. Um, did you feel this earthquake? How long did it last? There was no reports on how long it lasted. There was one report that said it was a quick jolt. Put your information down below. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Always be prepared because any earthquake could be a foreshock for something much larger to come. In this area, this fault zone does have a history of large earthquakes. Please stay safe and I will talk to you later. God bless you all. Bye.